What's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. My name is Oe, and today I'm going to be reviewing Space Jam A New Legacy starring LeBron James, Don Cheadle, and LeBron's fake family, which was an issue I had with the movie, but I'll get into that in a little bit. Now, Space Jam A New Legacy takes place when a rogue sophisticated AI called Algae Rhythm, it's a stupid ass name, but we're going to roll with it. Algae Rhythm is played by Don Cheadle, and he sucks LeBron and Fake Bronny One into this world called the Serververse, which is all the Warner Brothers properties. You got Harry Potter, you got the DC Universe, you got the Matrix, you got King Kong, all that. You got it all incorporated in this universe, and Algae Rhythm forces LeBron and his son to take part in a high stakes basketball tournament plus teaming up with the Looney Tunes in order to escape this world. That's pretty much the synopsis of this movie. I mean, I, in the first Space Jam, it was a lot more simpler. Bugs Bunny and the Looney Tunes needed Michael Jordan's help, so they sucked his ass through a golf hole, and they were in Looney Tune world. That, that's all it took. Uh, in this world, you had this whole elaborate world set up by Don Cheadle's character, who, I'll just say this right out the back, uh, Don Cheadle, he was okay in this movie. He was pretty solid. He was the villain. He was eccentric. He was upbeat. He looked like he was having fun just chewing up the scenery in each scene that he was in, so he was okay. Uh, my main issue with the movie was LeBron and his kid. That was mostly, the, the story revolved around them, and LeBron's kid... Fake Bronny, he had a large role to play in the movie, which was an issue I had. He almost had as much screen time as LeBron James in this movie. I don't want to shit on Fake Bronny's acting. It's not that good. It's okay. He's a young actor. He'll be alright. But I felt like if we could have replaced him with a real Bronny, it would have made no difference. We probably would have got the same acting chops from a real Bronny than we did with Fake Bronny. So why not have your real kids act with you in the movie? I don't get it. Why not? Because I felt like the Looney Tunes did not have as much screen time as they did in the first movie. And they had very minimal time to shine. They do, you know, their Looney Tune things here and there, all their, you know, zany uh, antics and shit. But I felt like we could have had more of them. Like in the first Space Jam, we had like a real good scene where Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck infiltrate Michael Jordan's house in the real world. And they have to steal Michael Jordan's gear to help him play. Like, that was a good scene, and we had more interaction between the Looney Tunes together. In this movie, not so much. And that's because they incorporated a lot of the Warner Brothers properties. So you had Harry Potter, you had the DCEU, you had the Matrix, you had King Kong, you had Iron Giant. You had so many characters on screen sometimes. And that was a plus and a negative. You had, like, the CGI background characters... And that was cool seeing them hang out in the background. But then you also had like real actors and extras playing iconic characters in movies like Pennywise, the Penguin, Mr. Freeze. And these extras playing these characters look like complete trash. They look like they got, you know, the costumes and the wardrobe from a Halloween store or Party City. I was like, no, let's not do this. I was like, this is distracting and it's distracting in a bad way. Like, why not CGI those characters as well? It was a hit, you know, having all those different type of characters in one movie, but it was also like a big miss with the close-ups of the extras. I was like, oh, that looks like shit. <laughs> like, why? Why, WB? Why'd you do this? But the movie was really pretty to look at. There were some really good effects, but the most of the fun I had was, wasn't with the crisp 3D animation effects. It was with the 2D animation stuff. Like, there's a sequence with LeBron. He turns into a cartoon, which they show in the trailer. That's when he does his best acting as well, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But LeBron does his best acting as a 2D animation character in this movie. And that's when I had the most fun with the movie. Because we had LeBron and Bugs Bunny go throughout all these different properties like the DCEU, Harry Potter, even Mad Max. They're trying to recruit all the Looney Tunes who have been misplaced in all these different universes. That was the most entertaining part of the movie. Uh, that's when I had the most fun. And then you had the typical basketball game set up and all that. One issue I had with that was the Goon Squad. Don Cheadle sets up this Goon Squad, the villain basketball player characters that consisted of mutated, deranged versions of real basketball players. Like we had Anthony Davis, you had Damian Lillard, you had Clay Thompson's in there as well. Then you had two WNBA stars, which I don't know their names. Sorry, I don't know the names of these WNBA stars because frankly, I don't care about the WNBA. But we had them as the Goon Squad and they had, they did pretty 
creative things with the way they scored with those characters, but you know they were they weren't really that memorable or entertaining. They were pretty disappointing. I felt like we could have done more with them, and especially with the NBA stars as their personalities. There wasn't enough of that. I feel like the Monstars in Space Jam 1 were way more memorable and uh, entertaining. And they were more sympathetic, too. Like, the Monstars in Space Jam 1, they were like little pathetic, adorable little aliens who got the powers of NBA All-Stars, and they became bullies. They were even, like, more fleshed-out characters in the first movie. At least the Monstars were. And I feel like the Monstars would beat the Goon Squad in a seven-game series. I really do. I believe that. Like in the first Space Jam, you had the likes of Larry Bird, Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing, Larry Johnson, Muggsy Bogue, Sean Bradley. You had all these cool side characters that were in the movie. You had Bill Murray as himself, which is always a good time. And then you had Newman from Seinfeld. You had that actor in the movie. He was entertaining. I mean, the Space Jam 1 had all these interesting side characters who were played by real people and fake people. And in this movie, you just have LeBron James. And he's, his acting, uh, here we go. So let's get into my main gripe, and that's LeBron's acting in this movie. And I can't even blame LeBron so much for his terrible acting. Uh, it's the writing. It's If we didn't have to deal with his family, if we could have simplified LeBron's role a lot more in this movie, we would have got better acting because they try to like widen his range for this movie. I mean, he does a speech at the end with his kid where you're trying to get all these emotions out. And I was like, oh, this is terrible. Like, LeBron, you are embarrassing yourself. And I feel bad for you because this is terrible acting. And that's the writer's fault. I think they were asking too much of LeBron for this scene. They should have simplified his role a lot more. Just make it be about winning a basketball game with all these cool characters involved. That's all it should have been about. Uh, and he just had more memorable moments in the first movie. I don't want to spoil anything for Space Jam, A New Legacy, but like in the first Space Jam, you had Bill Murray show up as a sixth man, which was awesome. And then you had all the Looney Tunes drink Michael Jordan's <laughs> secret juice, which was like a steroid that Bugs Bunny made up to make them believe and rally them to play like Michael Jordan. And then you had Michael Jordan's dunk at the end of the movie where... He outstretches his arm as all the monsters are just piling up on top of him. I still remember those moments of Space Jam 1. As in this movie, I, I'm going to remember nothing. I saw some colorful shit on screen. Um, even the soundtrack wasn't memorable. Uh, it was pretty generic. At least in the first Space Jam, you had seals fly like an eagle. That's, a, that's the jam right there. And then you had... I Believe I Can Fly by R. Kelly, who's kind of a scumbag nowadays, but that song is still fire. I mean, the soundtrack for Space Jam 1, I remember having that shit on cassette. I love that soundtrack. In Space Jam A New Legacy, like I said, you don't have any of that. You don't have any other NBA stars. This is like LeBron's movie. This is all for himself. I mean, eh, I, I wish we would have got more NBA stars. And I think if you want to elevate the franchise of Space Jam A New Legacy, you gotta add more NBA stars and even bring back more NBA legends because this ain't a new legacy. This is a one and done for me. Uh, I, I wouldn't be looking forward to Space Jam 3, another legacy, unless it starred Michael Jordan. Unless we get like a LeBron, Michael Jordan team up, that would be pretty cool. We're just bringing more players, bringing more legends. I, I don't think we could just have, you know, the role in Space Jam cater to just one player. Uh, not unless you're Michael Jordan in his prime. Y you need more stars. So at the end of the day, I'd have to say I was disappointed with Space Jam, A New Legacy. I wish we would have got a different story. That way we didn't have to rely too much on LeBron's acting. But hey, at least there were some, you know, colorful things to look at. There were some unexpected cameos that kind of caught me off guard that were pretty funny. Uh, but for the most part, I was bored in this movie. I wasn't interested in any of the characters. The Looney Tunes weren't loony enough for me. Uh, yeah, I was disappointed in this movie. I'm going to have to give Space Jam a new legacy a 4.8. That might be my lowest score I think I've ever given on this channel yet, which is, you know, maybe I'm being a nostalgic bias asshole because I like the first Space Jam and I think Michael Jordan's the greatest NBA player of all time. But hey, that's that. Uh, let me know what you think down below. What you think of the movie? What would you rate it? Uh, which Space Jam do you think is better? I want to know and why. Let me know down below. Post in the comment section. If you like the video, hit that like button. If you like the channel and want to see me again, hit that subscribe button as well. And I will see you all next time.
See ya.